Magnolia has a unique process of capturing history and it was designed uh, when we did Magnolia Memories and Milestones with 13 writers and volunteer writers, all Magnolians, step up and they take a story, a historically researched, academically studied story uh, like The Lighthouse or uh, Henry Smith, our first pioneer, or they do uh, their memoir of growing up in, in a certain era. And so they work with a peer editor and they refine their script, then they go to into editing and go through the whole process. They select their, um, and find the archival photos that will be used in their chapters, and then um, they finish up with final editing. So they're, they're involved in the entire process. It's quite unique. So in book one, we had 13 writers. In book two, we had 32. And in book three, we had 60 who wanted to step up and tell us about the 50s and 60s. It was quite exciting, quite a crew. The books are beautifully designed, and uh, they're often referred to as coffee table books, but they do have a lot of um, stories in them. And the stories are uh, first-person narratives, uh, lots of detail about what it was like to live on Magnolia um, in the t from now from the 20s up through the 60s. Um, there's a lot of general history. Uh, this book uh, particularly did some interesting things like the building of Blaine, which is right up there, and the combination of the uh, rec center, which was the first west of the Mississippi to combine a public school and a park property a facility, and it was quite controversial, and it's quite a story in uh, book three, Magnolia Mid-Century Memories. Uh, the library, which was a 30-year struggle to get a library on Magnolia, permanent branch library, which then became an AIA um, award winner, and um, we're very proud of that, but the story is long and winding, and it's quite interesting. Uh, we've done stories on the Magnolia Boulevard, uh, the, the West Point Lighthouse, Fort Lawton, uh, how Discovery Park was formed, how Magnolia got its name, and then many, um, probably, I'm guessing maybe 20-some first-person narratives of what it was like to live here. I'm very happy with the process. This book has just generated enthusiasm. It was helped create the Magnolia Historical Society. Um, it has uh, really been a special experience to be to be a part of those teams um, and to work with people who are all committed in capturing history and making it academically researched and uh, and true. So that it has been a special process. The products are beautiful. Um, our designer Paul Langland has done an excellent job, and I think um, they're fun and easy to read. You can take them bit by bit, chapter by chapter. You can do a whole book read if you want to. And it uh, spans a large amount of time on Magnolia. Magnolia was not really populated until the 1940s. It was a, a boom after World War II. So we get in first book some of the really early history. Um, we have in the second book the archeological dig, which really did establish at West Point treatment plant when they were going in to do secondary treatment that this was an area that had uh, natives here 4,500 years ago, and that was really a archeological find. We have that story in the second book. This book, the mid-century book, really talks about two decades that are very different. The bucolic, leave it to beaver, 1950s, into the twist and shout, 60s, which is, you know, Vietnam, uh, civil rights, and the summer of love all combined, and how they affected everyone. From the, from the nuclear um, bombing uh, drills that were done in the schools, uh, the earthquake we had in the 60s that was fairly significant. I think it was a 6.4, 6.5 earthquake. Just chock full of really interesting stories.